Well, good evening and Merry Christmas and welcome to United in Christ Lutheran Church's digital web space. We are so glad that you are here gathered with us as we mark God's arrival in our midst of this Christmas Eve. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us in worship this evening. We've got a spot picked out for you right up front with Kathy tonight. We are so grateful that you're here with us. We're going to be getting started in just a minute here. But in the meantime, Merry Christmas, gang. Thank you for being here with us in worship tonight.
good evening. Good evening. Uh, let's try that again. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! That's more like it. Welcome to worship here at United in Christ Lutheran Church. Thank you for being here as we gather together on this Christmas Eve to mark God's arrival in our midst, God's arrival meeting us, meeting you precisely where you are. Thank you. Thank you for being here to be a part of this gathering, a part of this service together tonight. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements as we get started with worship this evening. First, a uh, reminder that if you would like to come back for a doubleheader this evening, we'll be doing this again together at 11 p.m. tonight. Uh, if you would like to gather together in a more reflective and intimate setting, we invite you to come back again at 11 p.m. this evening. Or if you'd like to gather with us on a regular basis, we do this, would you believe, every single Sunday. Not at 6 p.m., but rather at 10 a.m. every week. Uh, and with a particular invitation to join us next Sunday, uh, when we will be continuing this season of Christmas. Uh, the 12 days of Christmas, after all, begin tomorrow. They don't end tomorrow. And so next Sunday, we'll be gathering together on December 31st for a service of Lessons and Carols, where we will hear this Christmas story anew, and we will sing its proclamation into this world. But here's the thing. If you join us for worship next Sunday, we get it. It's Christmas Eve. It's, no, tonight's Christmas Eve, Michelle. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> next week is New Year's Eve, and you're not looking to get out of the house. So here's the incentive. If you join us for worship next week, you can come in your pajamas. Wear your finest PJs that you have to offer. Now, to be very clear, I did not say wear what you wear to bed on a regular basis. I said come wearing your pajamas next Sunday for the coziest Sunday of the year. The worship and music team will have donuts and hot chocolate and coffee at the ready for you. Bring it right on up into worship. But we hope you'll join us next Sunday at 10 a.m. for our annual Lessons and Carols pajama worship service. Uh, but in the meantime, I think that is enough to get us started this evening. So thank you. Thank you for being here, to be a part of this process, to be a part of this gathering, to be a part of this proclamation as God meets us here on this Christmas Eve. Our service this evening begins with an ancient tradition, this Christmas proclamation that has been echoed across centuries. We will repeat here once more tonight, but that'll be just after this evening's prelude. So for now, during the prelude, I ask you simply to remain seated, to take this time to center ourselves for worship to breathe in the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place, so that having been met by God when we leave this place, we do so with newfound hope and joy and strength to continue seeking God and serving God in all that we do. Thank you for being here on this Christmas evening.
Could you please rise in body or in spirit? Many ages after God created the heavens and the earth, when man and woman were formed in God's own image. Long after the great flood, when God sent the rainbow in the clouds as a sign of the covenant. 21 centuries from the time of Abraham and Sarah. 13 centuries after Moses led God's people to freedom. 11 centuries from the time of Ruth and the judges. A thousand years from the anointing of David as king. In fulfillment of times and years and months and days discerned by the prophets. In the 194th Olympiad, the 752nd year from the founding of the city of Rome, the 42nd year of the reign of Octavius Augustus. While the whole world enjoyed a span of peace, Jesus Christ, eternal God, Son of the Eternal Father, will, willing to hallow the world by his coming in mercy, was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. Today is the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, God made flesh. Please join me in singing our opening hymn number 289, Angels We Have Heard on High. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of great darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. 
for the, lo the yoke of your, their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David in his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. And Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. And he went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You'll find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a, a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, <laughs> Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary, Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. But at this time, I'd like to invite forward any of the young folks present in worship this evening for a special time together up front. Come on up, gang. I'm so glad you guys are all here this evening. We'll come on up to the pray ground. Come on over here, gang. It's so glad to see you all. I'm so glad to see you all. It's so good to see you all. Excellent, excellent, excellent. 
Guys, I'm so glad you're here tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. It's so cool. Normally, I don't get to see you guys like this. Normally, when I see you guys, it's like bright and sunny outside, isn't it? Huh? Normally, we don't get together. Why are we getting together? It's dark outside, Beckett. Why are we getting together when it's dark outside? Yeah, Coda, why are we getting outside? Why are we getting together when it's dark outside? Because it is the Christ's birthday, Coda says, very properly and correctly. Well done, yeah. We're getting together with somebody's special birthday today. Who is it? Jesus. Yeah, it's Jesus' birthday tomorrow. So tonight, we're getting together to celebrate all together. How cool is that? Now, i got to ask you guys. I asked... Santa comes. And Santa comes, yeah, obviously. Priorities, right? Absolutely. Now... Wow, you're going to your aunt's house and they got you some Gabby toys. Wow, that is really a called shot, Mom, right there. That's all right. This is excellent. I'm so glad you guys are here, though, to celebrate Jesus' birthday with us. This is great. Now, I asked some folks this morning, and I'm going to ask you guys now. Do you guys, are you guys all ready for Jesus' birthday? Are you guys all ready for yeah. Christmas? Yeah. What are some of the things you had to do to get ready for Christmas? Christmas? Yeah. Decorate the house. You decorated the house? Like like decorate the tree too, yeah, absolutely. You had to get a tree in the first place, yeah, Emmy. Oh, your sister still has to wrap her gifts for you, huh? Oh. oh, you got yours wrapped already, yeah, 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 absolutely. No, I get it, I get it. Some of us are more prepared than others. Yes, Talia. Um, and we have the dog, which is trying to go to sleep. Oh, you're gonna get ready to go to sleep, right? And get ready for the morning and all the surprises, yeah. Oh, the doll will come with the presents with Santa coming in the house. Absolutely. We're getting ready for it, right? Yeah, back it. It's the night before Christmas. So you're just ready because it's the night before Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. That's right, Scarlett. Sometimes you can watch TV shows while you're relaxing. Sometimes you can watch TV shows while you're relaxing. Like Christmas shows. We might be losing the plot a little bit. Yeah, Noel. Yeah, yeah, Layla. And we bake cookies. Oh, yes, this is all how we get prepared. Right, we watch Noel. We bake cookies while we do that. What else do we do, Addie? Um, you open presents. And you open presents on Christmas. Yeah, see, there's all sorts of things that we have to do to get ready, right? Because we're getting ready for Jesus' arrival. And, and in our story that we heard this evening already, we heard about how Jesus arrives. Did you hear about the shepherds in our story? Do you guys know what a shepherd is? What does a shepherd do? They watch the sheep. They watch the sheep. Is that what you're going to say, Scarlett? They watch the sheep, right? And, and, and we heard about the shepherds. And who visited the shepherds? Do you remember? Do you remember? Baby Jesus. Baby Jesus, right? The shepherds go to visit baby Jesus. But who talked to the shepherds? Uh, the angel. The angel. That's exactly right. The angel comes and talks to the shepherd. And they tell the shepherds about Mary and Joseph, Jesus' mommy and daddy, Right? And we learn all about these stories. And, and we have these things in church to help us remember those what stories. What about find baby Jesus? Wait, what do you mean, what about find baby Jesus? He's not there. Huh? Wait, what? Oh. Look. What do you mean he's not there? He's God. Addy, what? Look, he's God. Show me what you mean. Jesus. What do you mean he's not there? <laughs> Uh-oh. He misses. He's missing. Guys. Really Guys, wait, hold on. Because that's Joseph. That's Mary. That's the shepherds we just heard about. Uh oh, and we got a donkey, right? Yeah, and a cow. But who's supposed to go there? Baby Jesus. Oh no. Oh no. He's missing, guys. We gotta find baby Jesus. I mean, it's his birthday after all. We gotta find baby Jesus. You think you can find baby Jesus? Yeah. All right, split up. We gotta find him. Where is he? Where did he go? Where is baby Jesus? In the trees. You think he's in the trees? No. You think he's up there? No, I don't see him. Do you see him? Uh oh. Are you ready? We can't have Christmas without baby Jesus, right? Oh, no. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Actually, Pastor Justin forgets where he is for a minute. <laughs> no, I got it. Okay. <laughs> wow. that, was, that was such a go there for a minute. Where is he? He's, he's definitely not right there. Well, I don't think so. Where do you see him? You see him down there by the baptismal font? No? Is that what you're pointing back at? Um, no. I think I might... Uh, hey, check under the altar for a minute. I think that might be... Where's baby Jesus go? Is he up here? No, he's not up there. Hmm. Hmm. Let's, let's check all the cabinets and doors. Is he in the piano? Hey, Marilyn, some stuff was falling in here earlier. Is he in there? It was paper. No, it was just paper, not baby Jesus rattling around up there. All right. All right, let's take a look. Do you think he's down here? 
Where is he? Well, I've got wax, I've got wine, I've got uh, oil. What else do we need? Uh, chalice. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Look at this. Baby Jesus. There he is. <laughs> we found him. Thank goodness. Whew, I was really sweating that for a minute. All right, let's close this up. Let's bring baby Jesus over because now, now we can celebrate, right? Where does baby Jesus go in this scene? Where do you think he belongs? Right there? Right there. Well, should we put him in the manger just like that? Yeah. All right. When I put baby Jesus in the manger, everybody say happy birthday, Jesus, okay? So ready? When I put him in there, ready? One. Two, are you ready? Two. Are, right now, two. Are you sure? You, uh, you don't seem ready. One, two, three. Happy birthday, Jesus. Excellent. Good job, guys. Where was he? He was underneath here. Yeah, Pastor Justin put him there a couple weeks ago and then forgot, so that's all right. <laughs> so we'll come back over here in the playground. We'll finish up. Guys, it is finally Christmas time. We're finally all sorts of ready. But you know what? You know what? You know what forgetting about baby Jesus reminds me? Forgetting about baby Jesus a little bit reminds me that even if we don't feel prepared, even if we don't feel like we're ready, whether we're not happy enough or prepared enough or ready to go, the reminder of Christmas is that Jesus arrives for each and every one of you. Jesus comes to show you how much God loves you no matter what. Whether you're ready or not, Jesus comes and offers you God's love. That's right. So I tell you what, the next time, the next time you see a nativity or some trees or some gifts or some cookies or the next time you forget something, can you remember can you remember how much God loves each and every one of you and wants you to share that love with the world around us? Can you do that? Cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, there's a few things we should do before we head back to our seats. What do you think they are? Pray and get candy, get candy and get a coloring page. Yeah. And dip our hands in the water, right? Yeah. So let's go ahead. Let's fold our hands and bow our heads because that helps us concentrate when we pray. Dear God, we give you so much thanks for all of the good things of Christmas that help us show your love to the world. But most especially, God, we thank you for sending to us your son, Jesus, so that we might know that always and no matter what, whether we're ready or not, you are always loving us no matter where we go. God, help us to share that love with as many people and in as many ways as we can. For we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Thank you, guys. We've got some Christmas coloring pages for you over there. If you want a clipboard, you can grab it. You can dip your hands in the water. We've got some crayons, and you can either head back to your seats or, oops, we knocked over poinsettia. It happens. That's all right. Casualties were inevitable. Um, or we can take the crayons back to our seats. If you need more crayons, there's some back on that shelf, too, guys. We can get some candy, and we'll get on our way. Thank you, guys, for being here. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Oh, that's, that's all right. There's plenty more over there, Addy. I promise. I promise. You can get some. You, there's even some different coloring sheets. You can take one of each if you'd really like. Then anyway, you've got plenty to do through the rest of the service. Sound good? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Cool. Thanks, George. Whew. I'm glad we got the, the vote of confidence right there at the end. That's excellent. Excellent. Thank you guys for being here tonight. Very good. Very good. Generally, baby Jesus is in the pulpit, not in the altar, so that's all I'm saying. That's on you. Yeah, it is on me. All right, it's not just that I lost Jesus, okay? You know, I'll own up to it. But, but I tell you what, gang, would you be willing, would you be willing to receive my Christmas confession tonight? Can you be prepared with a little bit of absolution? Yeah, Marina, you were way too quick to agree to that. <laughs> Can you take it? Can you can you take a little bit of honesty this evening? Because you've got an exchange rate going. Yeah, that's right. Because here's the thing: if I'm gonna be completely honest with you all, Kelsey and I are wildly underprepared <laughs> for this Christmas. I see a lot of nodding heads. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. It feels like we are just sort of like skirting by at this point. I'm not sure that there's much skin left on our teeth if you catch my drift. I mean, like, listen, listen, we got our tree a few weeks ago, but it was like just before the farm started shutting down and we kind of had to like take what they had left, you know what I mean? And now, uh, now that tree that we got, the, the kind of last of the litter, it, it's now sitting in our living room staring at us 
kind of bare. <laughs> it's got some lights on it. But, but other than that, the, the, the only ornaments that have made their way onto it at this point are the ones that we've received this year as new gifts. So there's like four ornaments. Three of them are a welcome to your new house ornament that are hanging there, huh? And listen, listen, the stuff that's sitting beneath that tree right now, like it's barely been wrapped in time. Like tomorrow morning, Kelsey and I set off for three different family Christmases taking place in a span of 18 hours, but there has been a sprint here at the end. And, and listen, some things, <laughs> some things just had to get left on the cutting room floor. Like ribbons and bows, pff, they're out this year, okay? It's a mad dash at this point, and we are, we are just slapping some paper on things and rolling on through, and we're just calling it we're calling it good enough, huh? I mean, we're not even, <laughs> we're not even close to the mo normal mile markers we hit at this time of year. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago when I brought that popcorn tin full of cookies from my grandmother's uh, a couple Sundays ago? Yeah, that pit tin is still filled. <laughs> we haven't even seen the bottom of it yet. And that's after, that's after trying to give away a whole ton of them after worship on that Sunday. We just, we just can't seem to get through them this year. It's like everything seems to be moving behind its proper pace. But, you know, I think, I, I, I think the most egregious infraction thus far is the one that kind of stares rather mockingly at me at the house from the corner of the kitchen just about every time I go home. I mean, its presence on the counter seems to sit as a... I would say seemingly soothing, but nonetheless humiliating reminder of just how far out of sync we seem to be with the holiday this year. Because listen, gang, I'm only 12 days into my advent calendar. <laughs> I don't know what that means, huh? but something doesn't feel right. Not to put her on blast or anything, but Kelsey didn't even open hers yet. <laughs> I mean, that's new in shrink wrap at this point, huh? I mean, it feels like a crime, if we're going to be honest. Yes, Addie. You have this. Do you want 12 more days worth? Because <laughs> really, it really feels like it's a crime, huh? Like the Christmas cops <laughs> are going to come out and arrest me, huh? Or, or, or that maybe, I don't know, if we don't eat all of these chocolates tonight, that somehow in like some sort of reverse Groundhog Day situation, Christmas is just going to get skipped tomorrow. Because if we're honest, if we're honest, like, it's been kind of tough this year, hasn't it? I, I mean, like, something has just seemed rather off. But here's the thing, I, I, I don't... I don't think I'm alone in that feeling. I've heard it from enough folks, I've heard it from enough of you that, that something has just felt, I don't know, out of whack or, or out of sync or out of rhythm with the way of things this year. And maybe, maybe as we're gathered here, maybe you're, maybe you're feeling a similar way tonight. I mean, maybe. Maybe you've arrived here, having driven past all of the lights, having walked past all of the trees, having taken in the wreaths and the decor, having settled in for a few Christmas carols in the car ride over after the holiday hits played over the airwaves. And maybe, maybe you're still wondering, how could it possibly be Christmas already? The reasons seem to be varied, but the feeling seems common this year. It seems to be a general disbelief that this time has already come. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe you know what I'm talking about when I say that I'm feeling underprepared. Maybe you're also feeling a, a, a sort of mad dash to wrap up all of your preparations tonight before the holiday quite literally dawns in a couple of hours. Maybe. Maybe in a world that seems to have, it seems to have prescribed a breakneck pace of productivity. Maybe you arrive here feeling that the frivolity of the season has simply been cornered out of the market of your time. 
Maybe there's simply no time left to get everything done that needs tending to, let alone, <laughs> let alone to sit here for an hour tonight. Or maybe, maybe a holiday now awash by, a, by an unfettered streak of consumerism. Maybe, maybe you feel the strain that the joy of the season seems to come with at an increased price point that seems less and less affordable. Maybe, maybe the holiday is something you feel you can no longer afford to indulge, leaving all of the pageantry and the display feeling, feeling just a bit hollow. Or maybe, maybe in a time where everyone is singing about the sentiments of glad tidings, of comfort and joy, maybe, maybe the news that you received at your last appointment was far from any of those feelings. Maybe singing of a joy to the world has been made more difficult when the latest prognosis came as such a gut punch that it's left the wind knocked out of you. Or maybe, maybe in a world that seems fraught with a turmoil so far from the idyllic peace that this season tries to proclaim, in a world where the birth, birthplace of this Savior is even now under siege, it's difficult to believe the messenger's chorus of peace and goodwill and God's favor. Maybe, maybe you arrive here bearing the worries of that world where ongoing violence and horrific atrocities quickly overshadow even the most festively adorned decor that we could possibly put out. Or maybe, maybe it's not even that something feels off this Christmas. Maybe it simply feels like that with everything else that's going on. Maybe there's just not enough room for Christmas this year. I mean, really. With the ways in which the world is moving, with that which is occupying our days and our lives, with the pace that's set around us and seems relentless regardless of what we think or do, I mean, really, <laughs> what's another baby? born this night. Everything's just going to keep turning anyway. Why all of this to mark one more entrance into this crazy and this hectic and this overwhelmed world? And really, <laughs> amid all the noise and the tumult, what's the word of a couple of shepherds? <laughs> What's one more call among a whole sea of voices telling us where to look? I mean, do they really think that we have the time or the bandwidth to drop everything and go now and see this thing that has taken place? I mean, I mean it seems like things just might already be a little too much this year to let the season sink in. But maybe, maybe that's precisely the point. Perhaps this is precisely what it makes this Christmas reminder so poignant among everything else. Maybe amid all that's already occupying us, amid all that seems to be taking up space in our world and in our lives, maybe, maybe this quiet arrival of such a humble beginning is precisely what God is trying to show us once more this Christmas. Because really, that's the audacity of God's chosen arrival in the first place, isn't it? That in the days of Emperor Augustus, during the time of Quirinius' gubernatorial authority, God should choose to arrive not among the lofty and the powerful, not with parades and festivals, not with royal edicts and world-stopping proclamations, but instead, God should choose to arrive amid a quiet family, should have such a holy announcement placed on the lips of everyday shepherds coming in from the field, Maybe, maybe the reminder this Christmas is that God has the sheer gall 
to bring the fullness of God's divine presence and step into this perfectly ordinary world and to name it as a place worth making God's home. The reminder of Christmas, after all, is that God looks at a world full of strained paces and bustling people, and God chooses to enter through a young, unwed couple tossed into the tides of such pacing, even as they are displaced from the familiarity of home. The reminder of Christmas is that God looks at a world of oppressive and ego-fueled violence and chooses to enter into it with a word of liberation, undermining its hollow ways, even at the risk of God's own life. The reminder of Christmas is that God looks at the frailty and at the vulnerability of this created humanity. And yet, God chooses to experience it in full, starting with the very vulnerability of an infant child being placed in a feeding trough. This, this is the wonder, this is the scandal of a miracle that God proclaims. That God chooses time and time again to arrive precisely when and where it feels like God should not. Like a toddler announcing their imminently prying eyes, God cries out, ready or not, here I come. And God boldly enters into our hustle and our bustle and our worry and our fear and our frailty and our trepidation and our seemingly relentless paces. See, on this Christmas, God is entering into this world for you. Right smack dab in the middle of everything else that is taking place. Right into the very center of a world that seems to have no room for him. Jesus arrives to meet you and gently bear the fullness of God's presence with you, and for you. Here, beside you and whatever else it is that you bring to this place, as the Christ child is laid down for the first night of mortal rest on this side of the created order, God chooses to call this home. God chooses to call you home. God chooses to dwell with you from this night on and forevermore. You, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter whom you love, no matter where you're from, no matter what worth you've been told outside of these walls, here you are found and you are claimed by the promises of the God whose name is with us the Emmanuel who greets you this night. This, this is the good news of great joy worth resounding from the heavenly chorus. That to you is born this day the Savior who is the long-awaited Messiah. To you is born the child carrying God's eternal promises of life and love for this world, even when, precisely when, it doesn't quite feel right. And for that, for that whether the calendar is done or not, whether we're ready or not, for that we can defiantly and we can longingly simply say, Merry Christmas. Go. Go and indeed take heart in this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. Go and join the shepherds in carrying this good news of great joy, breaking into this perfectly ordinary world. Go and join Mary in treasuring these things, even when they seem so unlikely amid the flurry of this world. Go. Go and join the invitation of this chorus to come and let us adore him. Christ the Lord.
Amen. I invite you to rise in spirit and our bodies. We join together in singing our hymn of the day, O Come All Ye Faithful, found on page 9 of the bulletin. Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's good news of great joy for all people, we offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and the world God loves. Glory to you, God, for the song of angels proclaiming to the world Christ's holy birth. Give your church a joyful song to sing that we bring the good news of peace and salvation to all people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Glory to you, God, for the stars that shine in the depth of the night. 
Provoke awe in our hearts at the expansive mystery of the cosmos. Open us to find beauty in the clear darkness of night and in the first glimmers of dawn. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Glory to you, God, for Mary's love and care. Glory to you, God, for the child born to us who establishes a kingdom of justice and righteousness. Break bonds of oppression, bring reconciliation to warring lands, and establish peace from this time onward and forevermore. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Glory to you, God, for Mary's loving care. Lead us to tend to one another in times of need. Share the comfort of your presence with all people tonight who are alone or separated from loved ones due to estrangement, incarceration, or illness, especially those we name before you now out loud or in the silence of our hearts. For the family and friends of Marie, for Peg, for Mary. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Glory to you, God, for the faithfulness of the shepherds and their vocation. Grant rest to any who feel exhausted from their work during this season. Retail and restaurant workers, church musicians, administrative staff, and clergy, organizers of charitable giving events, and service workers doing the essential tasks. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Glory to you, God, for the multitude of the heavenly host. We rejoice in the zeal of all your saints who have witnessed the appearing of your grace and who reveal to us your salvation for all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Abide with us, O God of mercy, and receive our prayers according to your abundant grace. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. As we prepare to receive, whoop, hold on, microphone, huh, maybe, am I on, no. Much better. As we prepare to receive this evening's offering, please know that we remain grateful for all of the ways in which you financially partner with us here at United in Christ. Whether it's by using the offering plates as they come around this evening, or whether it's by using our online offering plate through Tithely with the QR code either in the bulletin or in the insert in the pew in front of you. However it is you continue to partner with us, we are grateful for your support of God's ministries through this place. At this time, we'll plan to receive this evening's offering.
you please rise in spirit or in body? abundance receive and bless these gifts we have offered join our heart with the song of the angels and gather us at your table of celebration strengthen us to share with all the world the abundance of your grace upon grace poured out in jesus the word made flesh amen, amen. the lord be with you, and also with you. lift up your hearts we lift them to the lord. let us give thanks to the lord our god it is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us therefore proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Here at United in Christ, we understand that this invitation to communion is Christ's own invitation. And thus all gathered here are welcome at this table. We invite you to come forward in the center aisle, making two lines, to take a glass on your way forward, and then to receive the bread and receive the wine and return to our seats by the side aisles, placing our empty glasses in the trays as you go. Should you need or prefer, we have grape juice and gluten-free wafers available as well. Please just let those distributing communion know as you come forward. But come, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Please be seated. Christ given for you. And may you, no matter where you are gathered, know the blessings of Almighty God going with you this day and always. Amen. George, this is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. I remember just at the last minute. That is the body of Christ given for you. Cindy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Cindy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Judy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Chandler, this is the body of Christ given for you. Coda, this is the body of Christ given for you. Alicia, this is the body of Christ given for you. of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you, Brenda. This is the body of Christ given for you. Sandy, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Rose, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Nancy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Mel, this is the body of Christ given for you. Yeah, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Tim, this is the body of Christ given for you. Pam, this is the body of Christ given for you. Susan, this is the body of Christ given for you. Charlie, this is the body of Christ given for you. Kathy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Allie, this is the body of Christ given for you. Owen, this is the body of Christ given for you. Jim, this is the body of Christ given for you. Gail, this is the body of Christ given for you. Thank you. Marty, this is the body of Christ given for you. Marty, this is the body of Christ given for you. Nice sweater. Jane, Jane, do you remember? Uh, this is the body of Christ given for you. <laughs> right on to Aaron, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Christ 
Ruby, this is the body of Christ given for you. Donna, this is the body of Christ given for you. Jeff, this is the body of Christ given for you. Nicole, this is the body of Christ given for you. Justin, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. shed for you. Layla's. First, Layla, this is the body of Christ given for you. And Layla, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Scarlet, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Annie, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Delaney, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Christy, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Katie, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Please rise in spirit and body. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in Christ's grace. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have fed us at this table with gifts of grace, truth, and life. As you have gathered us in joy, send us forth as messengers of your peace. Make us shine with the good news of your glory, born to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. reading from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. 
And what has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's join together in singing our sending hymn, Joy to the World, number 267, found on some page of the bulletin. Fly. 
It's rock sails and play. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrow grow. Nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove holy of his righteousness, and hunters of his love. Wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. Christ the Savior is born. Go in peace. Proclaim the good news. Thanks be to God. A couple minutes. <laughs> Collecting the microphones and putting them back in the case. Uh, and we're just leave them up there then.